Wow! Merci beaucoup pour cet accueil très très chaleureux. Thank you so much for this very warm welcome. They've got me standing on a bit of a stool here. I don't know why. The number one piece of feedback I get after that I smile too much is that people say they didn't realize I was that tall. <laughs> So here's a few extra inches. I love coming to Winnipeg. It is always... Oh, now we... See, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna mention the Labor Day Classic. We'll make a deal. We won't mention the Labor Day Classic if you don't mention the Banjo Bowl. <laughs> you know, I was elected for the first time in 2004, and that was the exact same year. It was just a few weeks uh, before I was elected that my brother-in-law, Jill's brother, John, was picked up by the Blue Bombers, and he played for the Blue Bombers back in 2004. So my, absolutely, he's had a great career. Yeah, I had a great career in the NFL. He's back with the Rough Riders now. But that first Labor Day Classic I went to in Regina as a member of parliament, we're walking in with Jill's family and my mother-in-law hands me a Bombers jersey to put on. <laughs> and I said, Barb, I won by 800 votes. If I put that thing on, <laughs> I'm never gonna get elected again. <laughs> but I think we can all agree that we hope the Jets have a great season this year. All right. It's all about finding the common ground, <laughs> that's right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am in a really, really great mood. I am really excited because we are less than six weeks away from putting an end to Justin Trudeau's scandal play government. Et le 21 octobre, on va avoir un nouveau gouvernement conservatrice. This election is coming down to one simple question. Who do you trust to make life more affordable, to put more money in your pockets so that you can get ahead? Now let's talk about that first word, that first sentence, trust. Does anybody in this room trust Justin Trudeau to do anything he said? And why would we? Broken promises after broken promises. We know that he's been found guilty twice of breaking ethics laws. And we know that the RCMP is contacting people in his office about his role in the SNC-Lavalin affair. In fact, just today, just earlier today, the RCMP commissioner was asked specifically whether or not uh, she would like Justin Trudeau to waive the cabinet confidentiality to allow her to do her job. And she specifically said that they take all investigations very seriously. And I will repeat my call for Justin Trudeau to do the right thing. If he has nothing to hide, then he will waive those cabinet confidences. If he does not, then Canadians know that he is once again not telling the truth and that he is not as advertised. <laughs> He promised he would lower taxes for the middle class. Instead, 80% of Canadian middle class families are paying higher taxes today than they were in 2015. And his carbon tax is raising the cost of everything. Does anybody here think that the carbon tax is going to have an effect on reducing emissions? Well, I'm here to tell my colleagues and our future members of parliament, like Rajan, the first order of business under a conservative government, the first piece of legislation will be called an act to repeal the carbon tax. <laughs> we know it doesn't do anything to reduce emissions. It just makes everything more expensive. We're going to go one step further, though. And I know everyone here in Winnipeg, certainly Manitoba, we know what the winters are like. I moved from Ontario to Saskatchewan, and everyone said about the minus 40 winters, they said, it's okay, it's a dry cold. <laughs> well, minus 40 is minus 40, I'm sorry. <laughs> we know that in Canada, heating your home in the winter is not a luxury. It's a necessity. And that is why a conservative government will take the GST and HST off of home energy and home utility costs. <laughs> Thank you.
We've been making exciting announcements for the past few days. We started off this campaign talking about how we we're going to leave more money in the pockets of Canadians, and every single day we're out there spreading that message. We are going to bring back the public transit tax credit. Just yesterday, I announced the children's fitness and arts and learning tax credit will be coming back to help make life more affordable for our kids. And of course, on Sunday, I announced our universal tax cut, which will benefit every single Canadian taxpayer. We're going to lower the first income tax bracket from 15% to 13.75%. Et aujourd'hui, ce matin, nous avons annoncé un nouveau mesure pour aider les familles de épargner pour leurs enfants, pour l'éducation. Earlier today, we made a very exciting announcement. We are going to increase the federal contribution rate for our ESPs so that parents can help save money for their kids' education. And we are going to stand up for our economy, stand up for Canadian interests around the world. You know, I was here in Manitoba a few months ago talking with canola farmers about the impact that uh, China's blocking of our exports had on them and their industry. That was back in the winter. And we called on Justin Trudeau in those early weeks of that dispute with the government of China to do the right thing, to appeal that to the World Trade Organization. It took him months. It was just in the dying days of his government that he bothered to do it. It's quite clear that he doesn't take the concerns of Manitoba's agricultural producers seriously. Conservatives have always stood by our farmers and our ranchers, and we will do so in the future. So, a Conservative government will live within its means so we can put more money in your pocket because it's time for you to get ahead. We're going... We're going to live within our means. That means we're going to get back to balance budgets. It's so incredibly important that Canada gets back to balance budgets because we know what happens when Liberals run these massive deficits for years and years and years. More and more of your tax dollar goes to just pay the interest on that debt. Et un, les grands déficits nuire la capacité, la capacité pour les gouvernements d'investir dans les programmes sociaux. When governments run these massive deficits, it threatens important social programs, and it means, as liberals always do, after the election, when they don't need your vote, but they still need your money, they raise your taxes again and again. We know the carbon tax is going to go up if the Liberals get elected. It's going to cost the average family hundreds of dollars a year in additional costs. It's raising the cost of gasoline, if you factor in their fuel standard, up to 30 cents a liter. And when Justin Trudeau was asked about high gas prices, remember this a little while ago, his answer was higher gas prices are exactly what he wanted. Well, wow. it is shameful. Shelly hasn't lost her touch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is shameful. It is absolutely shameful. And you know what? Millionaire liberals like Justin Trudeau might not mind paying higher gas prices, but hard-working Canadian families do. That's why we're going to put a stop to Justin Trudeau's carbon tax and all his tax hikes. So throughout this campaign, you're going to hear more ideas, more proposals, more concrete, concrete ways that our government will put more money in your pocket so that you can get ahead. That is the choice. That is the choice. Where Justin Trudeau will abuse the power of his office to reward his friends and punish his enemies, I will restore ethics and integrity back to government and shine a light on his corruption and scandal. where he has embarrassed Canada on the world stage and been bullied and pushed around, I will represent Canada with strength and conviction and defend Canadians' interests. Where he will apologize for our energy sector, act embarrassed about it, and threaten to phase out all those jobs that our men and women who work in that sector depend on, I will be a proud champion for Canada's natural resource sector and work to achieve independence so that we can get off of foreign oil once and for all in this country.
and where he will raise your taxes, run massive deficits, leave more and more debt to future generations of Canadians, I will run a government that lives within its means to make life more affordable so that you can get ahead. That is this choice this election. And I want you all to help Rajan win here in Winnipeg, right here in St. Boniface. I know we have great candidates from all over the Winnipeg area. I've, I've visited this area lots to support our candidates all across Winnipeg and all throughout Manitoba. It's going to be an incredibly exciting night on October 21st when we start looking at those elections, or the election results from all across the country. And I think Winnipeg will still come in a little bit before Regina because we're, you're still going to be an hour different. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, you're all. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so excited to see those results come in and see great candidates like Rajan, like all our uh, current members of parliament, heading back to Ottawa to form a conservative government. All of us working together across this country, from coast to coast, helping out our local campaigns, helping great candidates, going door to door, spreading that message. All of us, if we do all of that, if we do everything, we will win. All of us working together can and we will make sure that Justin Trudeau is a one-term prime minister. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been great.